Uh, hello everyone and welcome to iPhonePhotographySchool.com. In today's video we're going to be talking about editing sunset photos using Snapseed, which is my number one photography app. And I'm going to show you how I turned this image that you see over here into this spectacular Instagram. Now to get started, let's just go to Snapseed and see how we can do this. So I'm opening Snapseed, I'll change the orientation, and I'll select the image that uh, I started with. So I'll go to Photo Library, um, I'll go to the folder, select the image, and choose to use it. Now the first thing you might notice in this image is that the horizon is kind of uh, not straight exactly, and when it comes to horizons, I tend to be a little bit perfectionist, and I'm sorry, I tend to really want to keep the horizons straight in most of my photos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the straighten tool and see if I can make the horizon straight again. So now I'm just uh, adjusting the horizon by dragging the side of the photo, and I think this looks about right to me. Should be good enough, so we'll go ahead and save the changes. Okay, the next step I want to do is crop the image. As you know, in Instagram all the photos are squared, so I'll have to turn this one into a square as well. So what I have to do is I have to click on this aspect ratio button at the bottom, and instead of three, which is selected now, I have to choose one by one, which will allow me to qu uh, create square photos easily. And I'll expand the crop area a little bit, so that I really get more stuff into the picture, because I want, I want to have more inside, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the compos composition to something like this. I think it fo follows the rules of thirds nicely, and also I like how this shadow, which you can see on the beach, is extending uh, over the sand. I, I think it adds a nice dramatic dimension to the photo. So now that I've chosen the composition, I can go ahead and save the changes. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to Tune Image Module to really make some uh, dramatic adjustments to colors and contrast. Now the first thing I often like to do is to go to Ambience, which is the option over here. And in Ambience, what it does is that it really brings out contrast and detail from the, usually the darkest parts of the image. And here I'm going to go quite high and I'll increase ambience all the way to something like 60. If you go all the way up to 100, it might be way too much, but I think 60 would be perfect for this photo. So I'll stay at around 60. One of the things I'm doing this is that ambience also allows me to really emphasize some of the cool details in the sky and make the sky look far more dramatic, so that's why I'm increasing it as well even though you don't see it yet, because I have to apply some other adjustments as well. In fact, I think I'll go even as high as uh, 65. It might work even better. So I'll apply the changes, and see what I can do next. The next things I want to do are also in Tune Image Module, just like the ambience. And I think I'm going to start by looking at uh, white balance. For many of the uh, sunset photos, it's really, really a good idea to increase the white balance. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go all the way up to something like 15 for now, even though I might want to adjust it later. And now you can see that the colors look a little bit more golden. Like if you, we started with this, but now all of a sudden the entire image has this golden vibe, which is good for sunset images. Now another thing I want to do here is I want to increase contrast. And I think that the contrast is way too low at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and just increase it to something like 20 for now. And in case you're wondering how I know how far I have to go on each of these uh, adjustments, the answer is I don't. I just have to keep trying out different combinations until I see what works best. Uh, so now that the uh, contrast is increased, uh, another thing I want to do is decrease the brightness. And now this might seem a little bit counterintuitive, like why would you want to make the picture darker? Uh, but I've found that for a lot of uh, images like this, uh, that have some uh, spectacular sky, or that have a lot of contrast in them already, uh, decreasing the brightness helps bring this out even more. 
like as you see, as I keep going darker, uh, the image get, get, uh, gets more and more dynamic. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And I think I'm going to stay at something like uh, minus 25 here for now. And finally, we can look at saturation. Uh, this image is already very much saturated, but I think if I increase it just a little bit to something like 5, then I might, might get even better res results. So I'll try that for now. So now I'm kind of done, but I'm not exactly happy. So I think I'll just keep playing around with the uh, different adjustments until I get the perfect combination. Uh, I think contrast can go up to 25. Uh, I also think that brightness could go down. Or actually I'll leave it to minus 25 for now. And I'll see what I can do with white balance. Yeah, I don't want to go higher than 20 because then the blue sky will turn essentially brown and that's not what I'm looking for here. So for white balance I'll stay at 20. For saturation I'll go to 10. For contrast uh, I'll stay at something like 25. For ambience, well I've done enough of that so I'm not going to increase it at this point. And finally, for brightness, I think I'll go all the way down to 30, minus 30. Okay, so this is, this is quite good. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and save changes. Now I'm almost done. And in most cases, I could probably just save this image at the moment. But there's a little problem. If you look at the uh, right-hand side of the photo, right in the middle of the sea, you can see a little, bit, a little point of blemish. And the reason why I have this white point here is that in this photo you can see that the sun is actually captured inside the frame. And whenever you capture the sun with your iPhone, you're, it's likely that you're going to get some sort of uh, distractions in your photo. And I don't really like the way it stands out here, but there's something I can do. And in order to correct this, I'll have to go to Selective Adjust Model. And what I have to do is I have to click on this plus button at the bottom and very carefully place it so that um, so that the point I'm adjusting is right at the point of where the problem is, just like this. Now I'll have to use two fingers to pinch and to make this point as tiny as I possibly can because I only want to change this tiny little white spot which you can see uh, down here. I don't want to change anything else in this picture so I'm going to go ahead and make this little dot as tiny as I can. Something like this. And in order to make this spot uh, less visible, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decrease the brightness at this point, And that way it shouldn't stand out as much. Let me try this out. So for brightness, I'll go all the way to minus 60 and see what happens. And as you can see here, I've actually missed the right point. So I have to adjust the position of it again. Don't know how that happened. So let me try this again. Still not quite there yet. Okay, now I'm there. And you, see, you can see that this adjustment has already made the point less noticeable. So I'll see what happens if I change the brightness even more, something like minus 90, or even minus 100. And I think minus 90 was better. So if you look carefully now, this is what we had before, and this is what we have now. And as you can see, this point of blemish is virtually uh, elimin eliminated from the picture now, so we can just go ahead and save changes. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm very happy with the way this image looks at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and save it to photo library. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. You can apply a very similar uh, process to ch uh, changing pretty much all of your sunset photos. It's always the same, even though the, the exact adjustments you make might be a little bit different, different from image to image, but the fundamentals stay the same. So this is the procedure I've used for countless sunset images, and I've always been happy with the results. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, 
And please uh, keep, keep going to iPhonePhotographySchool.com to see more tutorials like this. Thank